Hey there, crowdfunding enthusiasts. Welcome back to Atlas Crossings, where we unravel the mysteries of the internet and explore the fascinating world of fundraising. Today, we're diving into the evolution of crowdfunding from its humble beginnings to the thriving ecosystem we know and love. But first, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. We promise it won't ask you for money. Crowdfunding. You've probably heard of it. It's a way to raise money for a project or startup from many people or a crowd who believe in it. Online platforms like Kickstarter have helped people fund a wide range of products, like making a movie or just making potato salad. The money raised on the site is a donation. Users may earn a reward for contributing, but not equity. Now there's a new type of crowdfunding where private business owners can raise the money they need to grow by offering equity in their company to the crowd. It's called equity crowdfunding. So let's rewind the clock and take a stroll down memory lane, shall we? Picture this. It's the early 2000s. Dial-up internet is a thing, and the world is discovering a magical place called MySpace. But in the shadows, a new phenomenon is brewing. Crowdfunding. Ah, the early days of crowdfunding. People were like, wait, you mean I can help fund someone's potato salad project? Sign me up. And thus, Kickstarter entered the scene in 2009, unleashing a tidal wave of creative projects, weird inventions, and you guessed it, potato salad dreams. Because who wouldn't want to invest in the culinary masterpiece that is potato salad? It's like the Mona Lisa of side dishes. But crowdfunding had a different approach in the past. In many countries, people used to ask the public to help solve a social or personal issue. People could crowdfund to build or renovate a school or community center, or even to pay for medical issues. This Canadian family was crowdfunding to buy a house. Fast forward a bit, and crowdfunding exploded faster than a Mentos in a bottle of soda. Platforms like Indiegogo, GoFundMe, and Rocket Hub joined the party, giving everyone and their grandma a chance to turn their dreams into reality. It was like Oprah giving away dreams. You get a project, you get a project, everybody gets a project. But wait, there's more. In 2012, the Jobs Act paved the way for equity crowdfunding, allowing everyday folks to invest in startups. Suddenly, you could be a mini shark from the comfort of your pajamas. Move over Wall Street, we've got a new wolf of crowdfunding in town. Crowdfunding wasn't just a local phenomenon, it went global. GoFundMe campaigns for heartwarming causes, Kickstarter projects breaking records, it was a feel-good revolution that transcended borders. It's like the United Nations of dreams, but without the bureaucracy. And just when you thought it couldn't get any wilder, along came crypto crowdfunding, or as we like to call it, crypto crowdfunding. ICOs and token sales took the stage, introducing a whole new level of risk and excitement. Because who needs dollars and cents when you can fund your project with Dogecoin and unicorn emojis? And there you have it, the epic journey of crowdfunding. From potato salad dreams to blockchain fantasies, it's been a wild ride. But hey, whether you're supporting a local artist or funding the next space expedition, remember, crowdfunding is more than just dollars and cents. It's about community, dreams, and of course, a whole lot of laughs along the way. If you enjoyed this trip through crowdfunding history, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share the joy. And as always, stay curious, stay awesome, until next time.